Now, looking beyond individual contributions, let's look at organizations. Companies also play a very big role here. Now, we don't need to set a bar really high where they expect them to contribute 10% of their revenue to the project that they rely on. It will be ideal, but that's not what is happening in reality. Can you talk about what are some of the meaningful ways in which organizations can support the very project that they rely on? Uh, donating money is certainly helpful. Like sponsoring uh, a project monetarily is is helpful, but it's not the only thing you can do, and it's not the only thing you should do. Um, projects that do receive financial sponsorship usually don't receive enough money to hire an engineer. So that money gets spent on like, you know, infra or maybe like outsourcing a tech writer or something like that or marketing costs. But even for projects that are relatively successful, like they've, they've been successfully donated to a foundation. Um, we can talk about the the ESO um, drama, I guess, at this point. Um, they, they still need resources that aren't money. Um, External Secrets Operator is a CNCF sandbox project. And a little while ago, the maintainers posted a cry for help on Reddit, wherein they threatened to stop releasing ESO because they simply don't have the people for it. And they specifically called out that they do get financial sponsorship from some companies, but it's not enough money to hire an engineer and there aren't enough maintainers. There aren't enough approvers. They are burned out and they can't do it anymore. So they threatened to stop issuing releases for it. And that's the position that a project that's part of the CNCF gets itself into it's much easier for a smaller project without the resources of a foundation behind it to get into a situation like that. So I would say if the product that you are selling that makes you money, that probably made you rich, is relying on an open source project, you have an obligation, not just morally, but to your own bottom line to contribute back to it in the form of both monetary resources, just sponsor it, give them cash, and dedicating engineers to working on it. Um, it doesn't have to be a whole team, but, you know, one or, you know, have all of an entire engineering team dedicate a couple hours a week to it, that kind of thing. Um, but you you do have to give back not just in money. You have to give back in actual hours of of work or that thing that you rely on to make money is going to fall over and you're going to be caught with your pants down. It's going to be super embarrassing. Kat, earlier you mentioned you are lucky to be paid to do this job. Isn't that uh, a perfect example of how companies can support people to work directly in the community? Both sides benefit. The company gets value, the community gets support, and you get to do a job you love. Yep, it's explicitly part of my job. Um, Minimus gets clout out of it. They've got a Kubernetes maintainer on staff. And they also get the benefit of, I always know exactly what the community is doing, what the community wants, what the community needs. And I get to give that information back to them. And the Kubernetes project gets somebody to babysit the release team. So yeah, it's that this is exactly what more companies should be doing. It's unusual for a startup this small to be doing it, but large companies do it all the time. Um, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Oracle, IBM, Red Hat, they all have entire teams that don't do anything but work on upstream projects. So really, we, we have two great examples right in front of our eyes. So thank you for sharing that, Kit. Now, Billy, let's hear your thoughts on this as well. A lot of times, large companies in particular, their lack of contribution is really the bottleneck for a lot, right? So think of this concept. If you've ever cooked a meal for 10 people, and how much work goes into that, or all 10 people want to help you cook, and then it just isn't actually that much work for anyone. So even just a few of these bigger companies that are totally reliant on the time that somebody is donating, giving away for free to an open source project they use, it really just doesn't scratch much to contribute some help, figure out where help is needed, and that goes a really long way. Throw a couple more companies in, right? You have 10 people helping you cook the meal. It's just not that much work for anyone at that point, and that's something that can scale very well. 
the unfortunate reality is that the bottleneck there is just a lot of ridiculous policies that these companies have about what they will allow people to invest time in versus the stuff they use is it's very, very common that it's in an employee contract that code that you develop during work hours or on the company computer belongs to them if they want it. And that's inhibits further development that they could be contributing knowingly or unknowing to a lot of these projects. But then also, you know, the companies, if they're successful, they've obviously figured out marketing. And I know that that was brushed over a little bit already, but I just want to bring up the example of uh, Lennis Torvalds when he was talking about how if he had to do UI design on an island or to get off an island, he would just die because he just, he, that's just not his talent. That's something he needs help with. You look at the original developers of the Tor project, the same thing. The documentation was all over. Everything looked scrappy. The tool was good. It's something they really needed help for. And so these are things that just aren't a big lift for a lot of up and thriving companies that totally rely on the backbone of code that other people just donated. Do you think we are seeing positive movements here or do companies still need a push to get more involved? We used to talk about being good open source citizen. Should we be giving companies clearer model for that? Because often they do want to contribute, but they get stuck. Maybe their code isn't ready for release. Maybe they don't have the right people or they just don't realize that they can support in other ways than these. What are your thoughts on that? I think we've successfully convinced the entire industry that open source software is good and that it's safe and secure. So we don't need to sell people on using open source anymore. Like that, that fight has like long since been won. Uh, I don't think that people have an excuse of, or companies have an excuse of not knowing that they can donate back to open source projects. Like they're just feigning ignorance if they're they're claiming that they're that, that's i don't know how to express uh how i feel about somebody making that assertion without cussing on a podcast but i don't buy it if a company says well i didn't know i could contribute back yes you did come on it's it's fundamentally the thing with open source is that anybody can contribute to it please um nobody's buying that argument so um i i think we we're on a good track with a bunch of companies spinning up OSPOs and really helping to like instill open source culture within their own companies and move towards doing more significant contributions back upstream. But in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of OSPOs get absolutely decimated, just like entirely laid off. Uh, And that doesn't feel good. I can't tell if it's because companies have decided that open contributing back is not profitable or if it's just another symptom of the belt tightening we're kind of seeing across the board with everybody and their mother laying off 5,000 people a quarter, um, which is unpleasant and terrifying to watch. And I wish everybody would just quit it because you're all showing record profits. So what are you doing genuinely? But um, I don't know. We were doing real well for a minute there and now it does feel like things are kind of slowing down, but if that trend continues, then we're going to keep seeing more stuff like the issue with ESO. And it's just going to get more and more significant. There are a lot of consumer products that, like this one XKCD comic, rely entirely on a tiny open source project that's maintained by like three people. And the the double-edged sword of open source is that we can also turn it off whenever we want. There's no legal requirement for us to keep releasing it. There's no legal requirement for us to issue a deprecation notice when we decide to stop updating something. We can just let it disappear and not tell anybody. And I fear that that will happen if companies don't go back towards the path of like significantly contributing back to the projects they they rely on. Because we're going to burn out. Even the Kubernetes project isn't immune to this one. We hurt for maintainers too. A lot of our like senior 
project leadership has been around for a really long time and replacing us is hard. So we, we are vulnerable to that kind of failure mode too. And we're enormous uh, compared to the rest of the open source ecosystem. So um, not to like scare off tech executives that are listening to this, but uh, we do control whether or not your product operates. So continue uh, giving back if you don't mind. I feel like this is essential for sustainability. Are there any official user groups or initiatives within CNCF focused on this? Or is this more of a grassroots discussion that needs to happen? Um, I mean, there's a bunch of like working groups within the CNCF. There is one for OSPOs. So that's that's probably a good place to hang out if you want to look at specifically OSPOs. There's also um, Tag Developer Experience, which has like some like slightly marketing-y stuff going on in it. Um, SIG Contributor Experience for specifically Kubernetes is a lot about like how to make the experience of being a Kubernetes contributor more uh, pleasant, including the onboarding process and finding out where you should go. So like like certainly there's there's resources for figuring out where you should be doing what um, within the ecosystem, but each project is going to have its own contributor ladders, its own processes, its own rules and requirements. And that is where things can get a little bit more difficult to figure out. Um, the Kubernetes project is has an unusually well-defined contributor ladder and several very, very easy entry points, but we are not the norm. So if you're looking to contribute somewhere else, you may uh, run into slightly more trouble than you would with us, but other projects need more help than we do. Like, don't don't hard prioritize on trying to contribute to Kubernetes. We struggle too, but like we have more resources and we have more like wiggle room to to withstand um, lean times. Other projects do not. So um, consider prioritizing the weird little project with three maintainers that you rely on before you prioritize supporting us. Yeah, and consider prioritizing the weird people with some very interesting talents that are part of that mix too. So the CNCF in particular has a, a couple people with this very kind of rare skill that's even difficult to describe sometimes, but one example is through my years of solutions engineering, I thought I was good at being able to explain the reason for open source and why you should support it and so on to the executive types or just any IT decision maker until I met a CNCF person who has all kinds of experience and I was blown away. This is a, somebody that knows exactly how to speak exactly the right language to the executive types to make them not just care about contributing back to open source, but have them tactically understand all the reasons why it also greatly benefits their business. And it's so good, and I've never seen anyone nail it so perfectly, yet it made me feel like I'm in kindergarten on that topic. You know, there's another person I met who really has it down well how to correctly measure developer engagement and developer love, which is something a lot of companies, the majority, I'll even boldly say, don't know how to do. And this is what we're seeing happen with this huge hit that DevRel has been taking the past couple of years, where a lot of those teams have been getting cut because it worked great for some companies who knew what they were doing. So a bunch of other ones did it, but they were trying to measure ROI the same as they do other things. And they weren't measuring correctly what the impact was. They didn't understand what the impact looks like when it comes exactly. So having people that understand that and know how to break that down and articulate it to turn on that light bulb for these companies is just a huge, huge thing that we need a lot more of. 